pretty big shoes for head to fill, Frank. And he came in, of course, last week against uh, Steelers. Did a good job when, I mean, uh, when Danny went out, he came in and played well. He's actually started the game six times. There's not one, but one of them. But he's got a big job tonight, has he? Well, he has his hands filled because he's going up against the defense that is led by, among others, this man, Dan Hampton. They're number one in the NFL in just about every category against the run and against the pass. And they have 53 sacks, which is a Chicago record, Frank. Set to go on the left, the Chicago Bears. They'll be receiving the kickoff for Ralph Benershka. Jack Cameron is back there, number 30, along with Dave Duerson. Youngster out of Notre Dame, and we are about to get underway. For San Diego, they are 6-7 and seven on the season. They are out of it. They have been injury back to playing for pride tonight. Benershka puts it up high, and Duerson will bring it out. And Duerson hit hard out of the 16-yard line, driven back there. Chris, one of the inside linebackers, and we'll watch Steve Fuller tonight, who has started the last three games, making his fourth to start tonight. If you follow the game, you know that Jim McMahon was out, was injured several weeks ago severely, a lacerated liver against the Raiders four weeks ago, to be exact. And Steve Fuller, who had been on the injured reserve from a preseason injury, has done remarkably well. He's thrown the ball 74 times, allowed no interceptions. In fact, he has been the hottest passer throughout the month of November. Mike Ditka, the head coach, plays no turnover football. Low risk passing opportunities. You can do that when you have a Walter Payton. But we're looking at the other setback, Matt Suey. Suey hit at the line of scrimmage, moves up for a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Here is the defensive unit the San Diego Chargers hope they can go with tonight. They have changed so many times defensively, primarily in their secondary. They have started eight defensive backs over the year. In all, they have had 65 players on their roster. Now, you compare that with 51 for the Chicago Bears. They have only lost two to injuries throughout this season, so you can understand why the Chargers' defense, which is way down in the NFL, 14th against the pass, last in the NFL, is in desperate trouble. Fuller, handoff, Suey, bounces off tackle, good hard runner. You'd probably hear more about Suey if he wasn't playing in the same backfield as Walter Payton. Suey with a gain of about three to bring up a third down and three. There is Matt Suey out of Penn State. Did a little bit of everything at Penn State. Good athlete, good blocker for Walter Payton, who, of course, has set the all-time rushing record in the NFL, surpassing Jimmy Brown earlier in this season. Payton needs 20 more yards to go to 13,000 for the season. Just a remarkable football player, Walter Payton. Of course, he wears number 34, as he has for the past 10 years. And this is our first look at Walter Payton. Payton out close to the first down. Not only has he set the all-time rushing record, he broke Jim Brown's record for career 100-yard games. He became the NFL's all-time combined yardage leader. He is also the Bears' all-time leading pass receiver, and he's the leading receiver coming in tonight. He also packed Mike Ditka's lunch, I think, too. <laughs> he does everything. Well, I tell you, on that run, he wished Calvin Thomas, Thomas, number 33, his fullback, would have gotten out there a little sooner. He was waiting for Thomas, and it allowed the pursuit to get there, and I think he may not have... Well, he did. He still got the first down. And there's Mike Ditka in the third and final year of his contract with the Bears. Coached with the Cowboys for nine years. Played pro football for 12 years. Five Pro Bowls. 19. What was it? About early 70s. Late 60s. He caught 75 as a tight end to set the standard for tight ends. I think that him personally in 63. The last time the Bears had a championship team and they beat the Giants 14 to 10. down and 10. Payton picking up the first down. Payton again. Ports the guard in the block out front and Payton just hurtling that body forward for about a four-yard pickup but a flag is down. That's funny. Holding. Holding against the Chicago Bears. They've only been penalized three times, I think, over the past three or four games. They have been remarkably penalty free. Our referee tonight is Chuck Heverling. And of course, Mike Ditka's counterpart tonight is Don Coriel. Holding, offense, number 33, first down. Calvin Thomas out in front of the play, holding, and for this man, it has been a troublesome year. He lost his leading rusher in Chuck Muncie in a 
celebrated story that I'm sure you've all heard about. He lost Kellen Winslow, a great tight end, a few weeks ago. And Kellen Winslow, they'll tell you how good he was. He was injured four games ago. He still is tied with Charlie Joyner, who set an NFL record a week ago in reception for reception for the year. First down and 20. Payton yeah. Got a screen, got a block in front of it. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage. That was a good call, and it appeared as if it had developed real well. As you know, Chicago is a very conservative offensive team, but when you have the type of defense that they have, you can play conservative relief. The worst thing you can do is get those penalties on first down and force you in a passing situation, but they made the most of it by throwing a very conservative uh, pass. And you see, Walter, you get him a little room. He can do a lot, unfortunately, at one of his own linemen come over and uh, assist in the tackle. He couldn't get, get out of Mark Barnes' way, could he? They mark it out over the 25-yard line, so it's second down and a long 11. Eight now, single setback in motion. Fuller looks downfield and dumps it to Suey. And Suey is covered quickly. Good defensive play over there. And you could expect it from Woody Lowe. Good active outside linebacker, number 51 for the Chargers. It'll bring up third down and long yardage. And the situational changes take place. Here in San Diego. Third down and nine. We were talking about Chicago being a conservative offense. It's on, in this game, I think to win it and do well, they're going to have to throw the ball downfield. Dick Buckus, you talk about one of the great Chicago Bears, and for my money, maybe the greatest football player I've ever seen. But I think Chicago's going to have to throw the ball downfield and take advantage of this beat-up Charger secondary. Third and nine. Fuller's a lot of running room, but he cannot get free. Fuller almost popped it loose, but he was snared there by Fred Robinson. They call him Big Dog down here. Got him earlier in the season on waivers from Tampa Bay. And so the Bears are stymied with their first offensive possession. The key play by Fred Robinson, a rookie from Miami. Lionel James, the smallest man in the NFL, drops for the Chargers on fourth down as Dave Finzer comes in to do the putting for Chicago. Averaging a little over 40 yards a punt. Free agent. Picked up this year by Chicago. Actually was with San Diego this past summer. Benzer doesn't turn over. And James at his 31-yard line. Runs into his own man. Hey, hey, hey. And James cuts it back inside. Good running. Out to the 39-yard line. That was a 45-yard punt by Fenzer and a nine-yard return by Lionel James. The Chargers, their first possession coming up. San Diego with their first possession of the ball game. Don already mentioned Ed Luther will open a quarterback. Dan Fouts, full drawing, sore back from a week ago against Pittsburgh. Ed Luther in his fifth year out of San Jose State. Here's one up. And stepping back to collect the ball. How many times do you see that? Right in front of Mike Richardson is one of the fine receivers in football. Uh, is 89, Wes Chandler. You saw that a lot yesterday, Don. Wes actually has been hurt, as a lot of these Chargers have off and on during the year, but that pass we've seen so many times. It's underthrown. The receiver has the advantage when he comes back. Yeah, we have to have some big plays. Yeah. We saw Mark Clayton do that all day yesterday against the Lester A's. He was covered, but he made fine adjustments to the ball. And Duper also did it. First down and 10 for the Chargers, 36-yard line of the Bears. Luther back again. A lot of time as he slides out of the pocket, but good coverage, trying to get it to West Chandler. Let's take a look at the offensive unit. Guy that will have his hands full tonight is Sam Clapham over in the left side of that offensive line working against the NFC's leader in sacks, Richard Dent. But here's Ed Luther, came in when Faust was hurt last week, as Don mentioned, was 21 of 32, 296 yards, a couple of touchdowns. And of course, I mentioned Kellen Winslow going down several weeks ago with an injury. And the people who have really taken up the slack have been Charlie Joyner, who set an all time NFL record last week, replacing. Charlie Taylor is the leading all-time receiver and the tight end. Uh -oh. Bobble coming away from the center. And covered by, the covered by San Diego. And 
Wayne Morris covers for San Diego. Let's take a look at the opening 4-3 set of the Bears. It's not a conventional 4-3. They move around, and the top side is that right side with Richard Dent and Dan Hampton. Al Harris having a big year at linebacker. Well, and Sean Gale, a rookie from Ohio State, opening at right cornerback, and there is Dan Fouts. Dan Full didn't. groin, tore back a week ago. And if you're hurting, Chicago's not a team that you want to play against. Third down, 13. Oh. And <laughs> incomplete. That just bounced off the back of one of the Bears, Dave Durison. <laughs> Dave Durison was as surprised as anybody. Ed's going to have to settle down a little bit by his own admission this morning. He says, you know, the one thing that you don't get, I've, I've been lucky in many respects to watch Danny Fouts play, but the other one, he says, unless you can play, after a, a time, he says, that's the only thing I can, I can improve, and he hasn't yeah. had a chance to play much today. That play was a time in play. He had Bobby Duckworth, number 82, open going across the middle. He just didn't time it up right to pass, that is. Maury Buford to putt. Jeff Fisher will be back guessing with him. He looks for the sideline. He does not. He puts it up high, looking for the coverage underneath. But Buford is called for the fair catch and executes, or rather Fisher, the fair catch at the 10-yard line. And the Bears will have their second possession tonight. Coming up, still no score. We'll be back from San Diego in a moment. Walter Payton ran for 76 yards, the longest run of his NFL career in a Monday night football game. It was at Denver on October 16, 1978. seen that long ago. Interesting style of running, O.J. Yeah, it's amazing he can collect those yards without that blazing speed that some of the other guys get those easy yards once they get in the open. There's first down and 10. The ball resting right up along 10-yard line. Bastionagel in motion. Payton over the left side. And that shows you one of the reasons he can get so many yards. He is unbelievably strong. He can bench press 390 pounds. He gets five yards in the traffic right there. Actually, he's close to do six yards. He is really not a very big guy. This morning at our meeting, stand by you, O.J. He, he's not, he really looks small. Yeah, well, that's in stature, his height, but his body, if you look at his arms, he has the arms of a guy about uh, 240 pounds. And he has one of the great stiff arms uh, you'll ever see in football. I'm sure you'll see it before the night's over. Second down and four. Gets it out. Wide receiver, Willie Galt. Willie Galt, questionable tonight with a questionable hamstring. He loved to see a guy. Steve Fuller has, has came up as a highly doubted rookie with Kansas City and the Rams, I believe, had him for a while. He's not played. He's come back in. They tell you this kid with the, the Clemson, four years and made one B. The rest of them were all A's. Now, that's that, that yeah. reminds me of uh, my college career. Well, he shouldn't make any mistakes here tonight. So he hasn't made any so far. He's for Willie Gall in the game now, wide receiver. He didn't open tonight. He split out to the right from Steve Fuller on first down and 10. The ball out of the 26-yard line. Payton once again. Good block on the outside with Borton on the trap block, giving Payton plenty of room on the inside. But he is hit at about the 29-yard line, held for about a three-yard pickup. Call it second down and seven. It is interesting. You know, he also led the NFL in that same year in kickoff returns. And in his fourth game this season, he played against the Detroit Lions uh, three games after this particular game, and he gained zero yards and ten carries. I guess it was against... That first well, we're game. talking about his fourth game against uh, Detroit when he ran for zero yards and ten carries. Second down and seven. Trouble. Gets the ball loose, forced to try to get it in the general area of Pat Dunsmore, but he really pays for it back around the 21-yard line. One of the things they said they were going to do is you see Steve kind of limbering up his shoulder. They feel he's maybe a better rollout passer, and therefore he's rolling out. I'll he, tell you, he's going he out. Hurt. Now, he had a separated shoulder, as I mentioned earlier, in training camp. He was on the injured reserve up until they had to bring him back when... Jim McMahon was injured the first time, and he tried to play it in, and he couldn't, so they had to bring in Bob Avellini. He gets hit here and goes down on that yeah, shoulder with a lot of weight on top of him. So we're going to see Rusty Lish come in 
Rusty Lisham for this oh. season, 15 of 28, no touchdowns, but four interceptions. They got him on waivers from the Cardinals this year. So he has not seen that much playing time. Rusty Lisham, the former Notre Damer. Ooh, and that might be all for him, too. Fish <laughs> is really hammered as he gets first down yardage out over the 35-yard line. Yep. And you get the feeling, and we'll check on it, but we don't know for sure whether that's the same shoulder he damaged in training camp. We'll try and get a report, but I can tell you there's nothing hurt like a shoulder. And with the weight that was on him, that he could even be a clavicle injury. And that is, of course, the one he's throwing with. It's really kind of ironic. We were talking to Walter this morning, and with Steve not being totally healthy, and McMahon being out, the Bears are trying to prepare for that, have an offensive formation where Walter is set back in the old tailback position, and could well be that. Yeah, that we might see that tonight. 36-yard line, first down pair. Calvin Thomas, and Thomas held for a couple of yards pickup. So it'll bring up second down and eight. I want to remind everyone that a week from tonight, we're going to be in Detroit with the Raiders, who, of course, are continuing to strive for their playoff spot. They might be the best team in football right now. They played tremendous football against Miami yesterday. And they will be going against Detroit, but it's a special time at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Many people have asked, why don't we bring it on at Eastern time? Well, we're going to bring it on at 8 o'clock Eastern time. That means 5 o'clock here in the West Coast. We'll see what happens. Everybody's got to get the car portable televisions out here on the West Coast. <laughs> Second and seven at the 39-yard line. And Rusty Lee with a fine shot, getting it in there to Willie Goff. And the Bears are in charge of territory near the 47-yard line, a 13-yard pickup. And a little bit more about Rusty. Told you he came on waivers this year from the Cardinals. Last year with the Cardinals, he didn't play that much either. He was six of 13, one touchdown, and two interceptions. Got the nice size. That's the 6'4", 250-pound quarterback they talk about. And I think sooner or later they would take advantage of this charge of secondary. You're looking at Billy Kay, number 31, one corner, and Lucius Smith, number 33, another corner. And they were at home eight weeks ago. They weren't on any NFL roster. At the 47-yard line, Walter Payton. Walter Payton hit first by Billy Ray Smith. He comes underneath. Gains a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. I get a feeling the offensive coordinator for Mike Ditka, and that, of course, is Ed Hughes, will talk, will talk to that offensive line and say, look, we're down to one. That's we're it. down to Rusty Lish. And it is a good offensive line. Big, big. Young. One young of the biggest things. Big, young line is right. All of them homegrown by the Bears. You don't see that much in pro football anymore. Either draft pick or a center, a free agent, Jay Hilgenberg. Charges Rita well. He gets a, maybe a half a yard out of it. It's going to bring up third down and long yardage for Rusty Leash. Woody Lowe in there defensively for San Diego. They've got less than four and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. No score from here in San Diego. Well, Don, I guess if a coach has won his championship of his conference, uh, he's not going to go against what worked for him, and that's probably why they're not throwing the ball downfield right now. That's really what he said today, and I, I can't blame him. Hey, they, he's got a great defensive team. Willie Galt stood out to the left. A great uh, would-be Olympic speedster. Leach trying to get the ball into the tight end. Moorhead is incomplete. And the Chargers have held once again. But the Bears now in deep trouble at quarterback. They cannot, they feel, bring Jim McMahon back before at least playoff time. He is much better. He had that lacerated liver from four weeks ago against the Raiders. So Rusty Lish is the man on the spot for Chicago. Benzer to punt. Lionel James is deep for San Diego. Benzer looking for the corner off the side of his foot. Four kick. And San Diego will get good field position. And they're going to mark that somewhere around the 25-yard line. We'll be back in San Diego. 
Diego, no score, 353. Remaining in the first quarter, the Chargers with the football at the 20-yard line. They've made some offensive line changes. Don Masick has come out at center. Wilkinson has moved over from guard. And Goforth has come in at left guard for Wilkinson. And this is Ernest Jackson who has been one of the bright spots for the Chargers all year long, coming into the night, 973 yards, needing 102 yards to regain the AFC rushing leadership for Marcus Allen. Allen at 1,074 now. But Jackson has been really spectacular this year when Chuck Muncy was taken off the roster, suspended. This youngster stepped in, an eight-round draft pick from a year ago, and has really performed well. again good defensive play a trade mark with the Chicago Bears Mike Singletary in on the side with Otis Wilson the Bears into the night first in every division every category defensively in the NFL overall against the rush and against the pass that was a real unusual play it's rare that you'll see a quarterback turn around and pitch to a running back who's running off tackle he can pitch it early because he doesn't fumble very much good hand Third down and eight. Bobby Duckworth, West Chandler, the wide receivers. And you saw the strategy of the Chargers, a good look at it. They kept two backs in to help out and try and protect Ed Luther. And there is Steve Fuller. You weren't with us. Well, he went out with what has now been reported, the slight shoulder separation. I can tell you there are no slight there shoulder right. separations. Oh, nothing as painful as a shoulder separation. Slight shoulder separation. <laughs> I had a slight line. man, Bill Edwards. I don't think ever had a shoulder separation. <laughs> I had a slight one. <laughs> Only hurt for about six months. Buford, punt, and he has to hurry it. Jeff Fisher is back. Buford got it up high enough where Fisher felt advised to make the fair catch, and he does so at the 37-yard line. Still no score. 2.27 remaining in the first quarter from San Diego. There has to be deep concern on the part of the Chicago Bears. Steve Fuller on the sideline with a slight shoulder separation. Rusty Leash, who has not played that much, drafted by the Cardinals back in 1980 out of Notre Dame. He's not played much. Walter Payton doing his thing. Oh, Fly goes right. down late as Payton erupts over the left side for about six yards. Billy Ray Smith there defensively, and they'll bring that one back, holding Bears. Tell you a little more about Rusty Leash as we watch Mike Ditka. In four years with the Cardinals, he only played in two seasons. Didn't play at all in 81 and 82, but for the four years, he was 12 of 30. Five interceptions, one touchdown. Holding offense, number 87. First down. Side in, Emory Moorhead, a holding. What I was trying to point out about Rusty Lish is he's on the spot, and he certainly has not scintillated over the past four years. I'll tell you something else. Rusty Leach was a quarterback at Notre Dame who started ahead of Joe Montana. And at times when Dan Devine was a little disenchanted with Montana, he put Leach in there. He's first down and 20. Leach, good pass. Gets it to Dunsmore. And Dunsmore in the hole. Ooh. And now they're saying the charges have it. Now they're no. indicating incomplete. You could just see that one coming because there were too many charges around there. That ball kind of floated up. Had to be the only, it was the only spot it could get in there. You know, watch it. This is a pretty nice touch here. Over the head. Right, dropped it right over the linebacker. That's Lyndon King, and man, he's going to get hit there, and he did, didn't he? Yeah, that's what never had nice. was bobbling the ball, never had control of it, so they'll bring it back. Back to the 27-yard line. It'll be second down and 20. Emory Moorhead replaces Dunsmore at tight end. Moorhead. A former giant they have been alternating bringing plays into rusty leash second and 20. copy of screen speed to willie golf world class speedster as leash fires gets the ball to Moorhead. Moorhead gets a little bit over the back as they mark it up around the 33-yard line. But it'll be third down at about 13. 155 remaining in the first quarter, and there is no score from San Diego. Again, the Ch Chargers would like to win strictly for pride. They are out of it as far as playoff hopes are concerned. But for Chicago, they feel it's very important. 
they have to, they feel, win their remaining games tonight. Then they have Green Bay and then Detroit. Then they know they will have that home field advantage for at least the first playoff game the weekend after Christmas. Third and long. Leash has a man open. And Moorhead comes down with it. No, out of bounds. Uh -huh. He would have been short of the first down in any event. He was bobbling the ball after he caught it. If he'd have caught it clean, I think he could have turned up and maybe he would have gotten the first down as it is. Even if he'd have kept it, he would have ran out of bounds as we look at it on replay. Watch here. He's short of the first down about five yards here. And he's bobbling the ball as he tries to turn up. It appears that he got control of it before he went out of bounds, though, even though he was, didn't have the distance for the first down. Lionel James is back. 5'6 and 171 pounder. Now, for nothing else, you have to admire his courage, but they'll tell you here that he is one a tough little cookie. Fifth round draft pick out of Auburn. This is Dave Finzer. Uh oh, that was a great by. Another short kick. James. <laughs> and the little one out of the 35 to about the 37 yard line, and they've got some tempers flying around here. Bears are back to playing Mike Zipka's kind of football. He was a feisty, rough, tough tight end when he played. George Hallis loved Mike Zipka. Loved the way he played. Loved the way he would take on anyone on the field. He's got his team playing that way. We'll be back. Tom Bass, interesting man, second tour here, now in his third year at San Diego, defensive coordinator. He's got his little, you see a little strap around his arm. He got somehow tied up in his kicking net last, was it, two weeks ago? Tore some kind of something up in his arm. He's done a good job for him. In the hospital last week, though, for a Pittsburgh game. Three-hour operation. 114 remaining in the first quarter. San Diego at their own 38-yard line. Luther under pressure, but gets the ball into Severs. Severs will have a first down over midfield to about the 49-yard line. I'll tell you, these tight ends, Severs and Holahan, playing hurt throughout much of the year, have really taken up the slack after the loss of Kellen Winslow. That was a nice job that time, I thought of it. Uh, for, uh, Big Ed Luther staying in the pocket, waiting till he opened up. Don, I'm surprised that they're staying in the pocket. I thought against the pressure of the Chicago team, they would roll out more and uh, do short rolls to try to get away from that heat inside the pocket. First down and 10. Rupert McGee, the man who broke that run that broke Miami's winning string, the rookie out of Mississippi, gets first down yardage inside the 33, and one of the most durable of all the Bears, Mike Hartenstein, has gone out. He has a twisted left knee, we are told. He started or played in his 144th consecutive game tonight. We are told that he might be coming back. One of the reasons you have to look at every game like a playoff game because the minute you say this is an easy game, we don't have to work hard, you find guys getting hurt. They're getting hurt anyway, the way they're playing today. First down and ten. With the movement, several oh. birds came on side. Oh. Luther had a free shot. Chandler was wide open, but Luther was under pressure. You saw the movement by the Bears. Two or three moved at once. Uh, that was strange, wasn't it? They did usually blow a whistle on that one, but evidently no contact was made. There's McMichael, the defensive left tackle, looking on. Bears will be charged with an offside, but that was one that Luther could have had free. Well, I think uh, Luther threw it up. Uh, Char I mean, uh, Wes Chandler had his man beat Sean Gill right away, and then he, he even started he to ease up a little bit. Number 76. First down. He started to ease up a little bit, and uh, Luther threw the ball downfield and tried to pick it up to get to it, just couldn't get under it. First down at five now. They marked it at the 32-yard line. Wayne Moore, 25. And they're now Jackson single setback, and they'll try him up the middle, and he's hit by Singletary, the middle linebacker, one of the fine linebackers in football today. Sort of characteristic of the Bears. He is a real hitter. Final second sticking off here in the first quarter. Bears really want this one tonight. They would like to play that first 
game of the playoffs at home, and they know that they have to win two outs to be assured of that. The Chargers have the football. They're near the 30-yard line of the Chicago Bears. No score in the game thus far. Chargers surprisingly strong on defense. Ed Luther. Uh, right. Let's move the corner for Wes Chandler. That timing pattern that we've seen Dan Fouts capable of completing so often, even before the break. Luther overthrowing. Let's take a look at the numbers for the first quarter. I'm a possession. Chicago dominating. Not a whole lot of numbers on that board. The deepest penetration up until now is where we are right now. The Chargers at the 30-yard line of the Bears. They were at the 36 once before. And the Bears have not shown much of anything on offense thus far. They, however, have lost their quarterback, Steve Fuller. Third down and four. They're trying to dump one to his big tight end, Pete Olahan, incomplete. That'll that bring a, up fourth down. That was the defense that we were, the Bears are talking about today. They actually have eight guys up there. There's only seven guys to block them. They'll charge. The one that's not blocked goes. But that, that time, the guy was left open. That ball was uh, should have been completed. Not a bad play to have called. Probably an automatic. They don't even call when they see that defense set up. We're going to watch Walsh Benershka. 13 of 19 for the season, his best of 51. Well within range, second leading field goal kicker in the history of the league. Behind Nick Lowry of Kansas City. 48-yard attempt. Luther gets it down. Yes, sir. And the Chargers score first. They're on the scoreboard, and a sellout crowd with a lot of empty seats cheering for the San Diego Chargers. They lead the Bears three to nothing. Jack Cameron is deep with Dave Dewerson for the Bears, awaiting the kickoff of Ralph Benershka. Chargers on top, three to nothing. Here as we begin opening play in the second quarter. Bears, for the first time this season, did not score in the first period of play. Dave Dewerson. And Dewerson to the 25 and out to the 26 on a 22-yard return. ABC's Wide World of Sports is returning this Saturday. 26-yard line, first down Bears. Chicago, thus far, has only managed to get to the 45-yard line of San Diego. We one quarter of play. Walter Tate. And Tate, again, having trouble with the pesky Charger defense. These middle linebackers, Mike Green and Billy Ray Smith, are, are really growing up, Don, for San Diego. What happens to, to a guy like... Peyton, though, you know, every time somebody plays, every every week, somebody's always going to try to set a new defense for him. And Tom Bass told us this morning, he says, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to assume that Walter's going to get 75, 80 yards. We want to try to hold him under 200. I mean, what, under 100? <laughs> Maybe 200 is what he was talking about. But you got those middle linebackers in there. Those guys are playing. They're playing good. They're good hitters. And the Ray Smith, Mike Green, both rookies a year ago. Both were starters. One and two in tackles for San Diego. Second down and eight. Leash is down and a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Chuck Ian in there defensively for San Diego. The flag is down at the line of scrimmage. What's going to happen to those Bears if they let the Chargers just keep going? Well, Frank mentioned they're going to be playing so loose because they're not, they're not in any kind of playoff picture. They're going to go out there and just have some fun. Well, it's Walter Payton. I think he would like to get the ball and start just running what they call muscle plays, you know. He's accustomed to playing with a team without a great quarterback and with their two starting quarterbacks, McMahon and now Fuller out. This is not an unusual situation for, uh, for Walter, but I think this Charger defense is quick. If they have a, uh, an advantage on defense, they're a very quick unit. And what the Bears will have to do to get something going here is stop trying to run... Uh, exotic plays and just run some muscle plays at them and beat them up a little bit. Soften them up for later on. Third down and 18. Leash from the shotgun and reverse it to Walter Payne. Speaking of exotic. <laughs> and the Chargers, Lyndon King, stayed in position. Drop Payton after an eight-yard pickup. It'll be fourth down, and the Bears will have to punt again. And there's a little touch of what you call your conservative football, isn't it? I don't <laughs> believe that I blame him, however, but third down and about 20. He says, let's just let, give it to Walter. Isn't that amazing? Every yard this man makes from now on is NFL history. They were not back ever to get over 13,000. Fenzer getting a workout, the punter for Chicago, as we look at Lionel James. Averaging just under nine yards in punt returns end of the night. Doing a little better than that. 
in the second quarter, San Diego on top, three to nothing. 48 yard field goal, Bernuska. Benzer, fine punt, hangs it, turns it over, and drops it at the 30, where Lionel James calls for the fair catch. 45 yard punt by Benzer. San Diego, they charged up. They'll be back in a moment with the ball. First time able to go tonight. Injured in a 52-24 loss to Pittsburgh a week ago. Injured groin, sore back. So we're watching Ed Luther. First and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Luther trying to get to Duckworth. Duckworth well covered. John Gale, the rookie from Ohio State, and a smattering of boos starting to accompany the play of Ed Luther. I wonder why. Oh, I guess that's what it was. You just overthrew him. That was well, another one of those strange little defensive looks that we've seen over there. Well, four or five guys down. The Chicago defense is based on pressure, and that pressure is beginning to work now, and what the Chargers will have to do is start rolling out. They're going to have to roll to one side to get away from some of that pressure. Pressure coming from Richard Dent and Dan Hampton. Dent, the lead in the NFC in sacks. Second down and ten. Jackson, oh, uh, uh, storming defense. Otis Wilson in there on the stop. Uh, he is having a great season. Five and a half sacks into the night. First round draft pick. One of several first round draft picks that starts for the Bears. Loss of three. It'll be third down and 13. Danny Boy. Sure missed him. And I tell you, for him to be old there, you know he's hurt. But he's uh, that growing injury. He's had before. And it was kind of aggravated. But he just got... He was hit from all sides when he went out that time. He hurt all over. Seven NFL records, 22 team records. Dan Fouts, they sorely miss him. Third and 13. There's a good roll. Look out in. Luther only putting two people in the pattern trying to protect him. That wasn't a design roll. He just had to get out of there. And the Bears had six defensive backs covering two charges downfield. He had to run the ball. Fourth down, Buford on again. And Jeff Fisher drops once again to the Bears. He can bring it back. He brought one back 88 yards against Tampa Bay when he was a rookie back in 81. No penalty. No penalty. Let's go. Buford, low kick. The kind you can run back. And Fisher takes it up the sideline and steps out of bounds near the 39-yard line where it'll be first down and 10. Good field position for Chicago. They trail three to nothing. We're in the second quarter from San Diego. It's consistent. Chicago unable to generate a lot of offense. They're not dazzling on offense anyway other than Walter Payton when he's having a hot day. But they don't turn the ball over. But and they fun. play good, solid defensive football. They get their share of turnovers. They've only turned the ball over 20 times into the night. At this point a year ago, they turned it over 32 times. This is the Bears. Best starting field position as they begin first down and 10 at their own 39-yard line. Willie Gault. Oh, he's got great speed. He's going all the way back, picking up the second line. And he doesn't have that great of speed. And Doug Ian, who was playing defensive left end, just stopped there and waited for him to come back. A loss of a couple. We asked Walter Payton how Mike Ditka's taking over as coach has changed this Bear team. He's been a veteran. Well, I think uh, with Mike, uh, what he's instilled into this team is that last last couple of years, we would go out and we would look for ways of losing the game. In other words, we would play, and then when something happens, the other team score then we would say, okay, that's it. That's the, uh, the scrub that broke the uh, camel's back. But now it's a little bit different. We're out looking for ways to win, and we know that we can win. I think that's uh, contributed to him and the way that uh, he approaches the game of football. Second down 11. This is Calvin Thomas on the screen, and that's covered that's well also. Billy Ray Smith reigning all over Calvin Thomas, a gain of about four. It'll bring a third down and seven. And Walter Payton can speak very knowingly about Mike Ditka because Ditka came in, took over the Bears three years ago, and they'd only had two winning seasons in 12 years. And of course, I mentioned that a very unlikely coach for Tom Landry, kind of a rough, tough sort of a guy, but he served nine years under Landry. And there are three Landry disciples coaching now in the National Football League, McAvick at Kansas City, Danny Reeves at Denver, and of course, Ditka now at Chicago. Disciple, good way of putting it. Third and seven. Wow. Nish. And the collect 
big breath for hell on the sideline to the Bears at least, I think. Well, did they mark it down? Yes, they marked it down. His progress at the 45-yard line. The Bears will maintain possession. They'll have a first down and 10, but I said they were holding their breath on the sidelines of the Bears. If they lose Rusty Lish, they're going to go to Walter Payton in some sort of a tailback offense. And the old shotgun routine. That'll be fun. I'd like to see that. You see Rusty had a lot of room up the middle. He didn't get much pressure there, and he does what, what he had to do. He had the ball. He took off and got the first down. That looked like a fumble, too. You also saw him do something else. An inexperienced quarterback or a guy hasn't played very, but he didn't look very long to that receiver. Let him uncover. And he just took, you know, took it down and ran. Get some more experience. Maybe he'll sit back in there. He didn't have to run that time. The booing, of course, the partisan crowd feels that he had coughed it up. But the Bears maintain possession. Walter Payton, right side. And Walter Payton finding absolutely nowhere to go tonight. Gets a yard maybe out of that. He'll bring up second down and nine. But he'll run it all night until he does get that break. Let's take a look at it from the reverse angle, and you can check your opinion against the referee's call. No, that's not a fumble. The ground cannot cause a fumble. He was hit. He hit the ground, and yeah. the ball came out then. So that was a good call by the officials. They make more good ones than they do bad ones. Stop throwing bricks in your TV set around the country. <laughs> Hate now, 26 yards, 7 carries. Rusty Leach looking over a second down and 9. Leach, wide, wide, wide open. Right. That's Moorhead. Incomplete. Uh, oh. Did he drop it or was he just... I think he was bobbling it once again as he slid out of bounds. Ken Green providing the coverage there, but Moorhead, a former giant for several years. That was another pattern. Uh, you know, it's always easy to second guess, but Brad Anderson, a wide receiver, was coming inside on that pattern, and he opened up a big hole in the middle that time. He did have, of course, an opening out to the outside, too, for Moorhead. Third down and nine. Chargers not a terrible threat of the pass rush. They only have 27 sacks this season. Bears have almost doubled that. Leash. And Dunsmore can't hold on. The pass that should have been caught by Dunsmore. Oh, McPherson. Uh-oh. Oh, and the tempers are flaring. They have been from the very start of this game. In any event, it'll bring up fourth down. And the Bears really frustrated on offense. Well, you don't like to see fights, but with the Bears having already since their championship or their playoff spot, it's good to see that they're this fired up for this game. I think it's as much frustration as anything else. They have been unable to do anything with what I'm sure that many of them felt, the Bears I'm talking about now, was a very weak defense. And statistically, it has been that over the year, but they're playing the Bears tough tonight. Lionel James once again. Dave Benzer on to punt for Chicago. Eight thirty-two remaining in the first half. San Diego leading three to nothing. Benzer puts it up high. Lionel James didn't call for the fair catch. He loses about three yards out of it, and it'll be marked at the 14-yard line. Ed Luther, final instructions from the sidelines. They'll have possession when we come. First down of 10, San Diego with a 3 to nothing lead. They're at their own 14-yard line, 821 remaining in the first half. A little mix-up in the backfield. Wide open is Duckworth. And Bobby Duckworth, putting the defenders, gets to the 41-yard line, even though there was a mix-up that could have caused a bit of a disaster back around the five-yard line. Ed Luther was able to get it to Bobby Duckworth, and he was right between Gary Fensick and Sean Gale, the rookie uh -huh. from Ohio State. Now, this is the play action pass, Don. It was just real slow faking back there. there it was. was. <laughs> it was uh, not a mix-up. They were just real slow in making the fake back there, and that's Bobby Duckworth. You see why he's averaging 24 yards to catch coming into this ball game. He is the speedster. Hey, they're a little slow back there, O.J., because yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that many crisscrossing in the backfield. Yeah. But it was effective. They mark it at the 42. First down and 10. The charge is leading three to nothing. Holahan in motion. Oh, yeah. Holahan, you 
usually sure-handed does not hold on. It'll be second down and 10, and we'll pause five seconds and allow our friends and stations around the country to identify themselves. San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium, where we're watching the San Diego Chargers with the three to nothing lead over the Chicago Bears. Vanushka had a 48 yard field goal for the only scoring of the night. The Bears, of course, nine and four, Central Division of the NFC. They clinched that division, but they want to win the remaining three games. Looking for that first game playoff bottom hole as we watch Ernest Jackson of the Chargers over the left side. And he'll get about four yards before Gary Fensick, one of the fine tackling defensive secondary men, makes the stop. It's a nice job on Anderson's, uh, I mean, Jack, Ernest uh, Jackson's part. He got the ball, and instead of trying to fake anybody, he got as much yards out of as he can, gives his team an advantage on third down and just five to go. But, Don, you just asked me what happened to that quick pitch pass. That was it. Why they it. weren't running it to Peyton? Well, that's the play that they should be running to Peyton tonight. Yeah, I think if you can get that ball quick to the outside like that with Walters moves, he's going to pick up some yardage. San Diego, their confidence is going to start building, even without Dan Faust in there tonight. They really will, because they don't have anything to lose. They're going to really be playing loose. He's got a guy open. Nobody there. there. It's the Seavers, and short of the first down as they mark it inside the 35-yard line, short by about three yards. Once again, Gary Fensick defensively there for the Bears. Charlie Joyner was open down the middle there, too. Charlie's looking back. He was standing and looking back at Ed Luther. said, wait a minute, I had a little bit more yardage down here. Fourth down, and what will they do? Got Bernerska in there. They're going to try it again. They've let Bernerska try as far as from 58 yards out. As long for the season as 51 yards. We'll see where they put it down. This will be a 53-yard attempt. That would be match his career best. He's got plenty of distance. Well, off to the right. And Chicago will get the football back, and they'll get it at the line of scrimmage at the 35-yard line. Bernerska missing from 53 yards out. They have really been banging around the Chicago Bear offense. We'll be returning with Chicago's possession in a moment. The Bears have not been thrilling offensively tonight. They have had their problems getting started against the Charger defense, which is way down. Dead last in the AFC. They had the first and ten. Right the middle. Middle. Oh. And this time they get the completion. This is Crink. First two man out of the Nebraska, number 89. 89. That's his first it's reception it's for the Bears this season. And he'll get about eight yards out of it, out to the 42-yard line. On that play, you saw why Walter Payton, Payton is considered by many people to be the finest all-around running back that has ever played the game. He came across on a fake. He picked up Lyndon King, a guy who weighs... 250 pounds at 6'5", and just put a beautiful block on him. He loves to block. Who does Walter? I don't know if he loves well, he to. He says he does, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I like it. I like it. On second and two, quick count by Lee. Go! Oh. That split defenders incomplete. Had a little pressure back there that time. Chuck Ian was coming in to put a little pressure on our boy Rusty. Rusty's got to be settled down now. He's had that first little rush of, what am I doing? And I'm the only one left. Now he realizes, hey, I am out here, so he's probably going to play a little bit better. I don't want to see Rusty Lish get hurt, but I sure would like to see Walter play quarterback in that single wing. You know, that Walter, was, he was really funny and, and cute about that. He said, you know, if, if things go really bad, I, we can get back there. And he's thrown, you know, and Walter has thrown for several touchdown passes. I'd like to run that shotgun. Speaks almost in a whisper. That's right. But you saw the smile on his face when we discussed his passing game. All running backs would like to be passers. And all passers would like to be runners. Leach now 5 of 11, 27 yards, third down and three. Oh. He won't get the three. And he'll lose yardage. He's buried back inside the 35, but they'll mark it right at the 40. And we'll see the punting unit once again for the Bears, and they're going to wear out Jeff Fisher. Tom Bass is proud of his boys. He's, let's go get them. He actually took responsibility, he said, for uh, that Pittsburgh game. Let's take another look at it. Yeah. Yes, he no, well, he's moving, but I don't think he came across the ball. The ball was snapped right as he started to make his move. And right now, San Diego is just too quick for Chicago. But actually, that did cause it because he knocked off that lead block. Lionel James is back. Fins are to punt.
Low kick that doesn't turn over. James had an opportunity, but he bounced the ball. And then collects it quickly at the 26-yard line. So San Diego still leading 3 to nothing. 4-14 remaining in the first half. We'll have a first down. The ball at their own 26-yard line. 37-yard punt. The ball once again. Directed by Ed Luther. Dan Fouts on the bench. Injured last week against Pittsburgh. Chargers first down and 10. The ball at their own 26-yard line. The Luther uh -huh. carried at the 21-yard line. They collapsed them that time, didn't they? 54 sack of the year. And, of course, the Bears are really proud of that. That's a new Bear record. Washington leads the league with 58 sacks. Seattle had 55. And now the Bears have moved into a tie with the Raiders with their 54th sack of the season. That was a little, they call it tricks, I guess, up in the middle of the line that time. Hampton came from his tackle out to the outside. And they just all fell right back in the middle of them. Yeah, they did a good job of pushing the pocket back and then getting their hands up so the QB couldn't see. Lost to four. Uh -oh. Down 14. A little confusion on the part of the Chargers. So they call timeout with 3.48 remaining. And the Chargers leading at three to nothing. The Chargers, two timeouts remaining. We'll be back in a moment. been brought to you by the National Football League. And the NFL charities continue to fund worthy national causes with a grant of $10,000 to the Betty Ford Center in Rancho Mirage, California. This took place a little bit earlier. Wonderful lady, Betty Ford, accepting the check from Alex Spanos, the owner of the San Diego Chargers. His first year as owner of the team, having purchased the team last summer from very colorful Gene Klein, who is going to live a quieter life, so he's going into thoroughbred racing. <laughs> and he is doing ever so well. He's got some really fine horses. Second down, 14, 348, remaining in the first half. San Diego, at their own 21 yard line, they lead three to nothing. Luther, Jackson, Luke Jackson, hammered at the 25 yard line. So Rich Richard Dent coming in late to rain all over Jackson. Good hustle by Dent, though. He had actually made a good rush and got back into the middle of that pocket well, he's up and yeah. reacted so quickly you'll see him come back watching this Dan Hampton 95 Hartstein 73 but watch out of the middle of this back number 95 now that is hustle he's on the other side way to go Richard Richard Dan he's 6'5 253 pounds an eight down draft pick a year ago and he allowed Dan Hampton to move inside and they have really been toughened up with the acquisition of Dan a year ago third down 13 had no chance he just had to throw the ball get rid of it avoid the sack and now the Bears toughening up defensively they are starting to pop out there and San Diego will have to punt and this time the Bears should get it back good field position so funny when you come to San Diego in the past we've always expected these air coils and high score games when we were here earlier Seattle beat San Diego 24 to nothing so almost six quarters we've only seen 27 points well, like the Miami Dolphins or the new San Diego Chargers, they score 34 points and lose. I think they've done that twice Ooh. in the last three weeks. Or Buford to punt again. Jeff Fisher is back to the Bears, standing at about his own 35-yard line. Buford hurries one. Fisher bobbles it and covers it quickly at the 40-yard line. So even though Fisher bobbles the ball, the Bears, who have been very slow offensively tonight getting started, they'll have good field position. We'll be right back. Bears offensive coordinator Ed Hughes probably going back to the drawing board because the Bears have had six possessions tonight. They have penetrated only to the 43-yard line of San Diego. They have had to punt on each occasion. They have a first down at 10, the ball at their own 40-yard line. possession I see how they worked that one out Bill Elko defensively working against Calvin Thomas coming out from the nose tackle position San Diego saying they got the ball back well the ball was moving around I don't think any of the officials saw that he may have dropped the ball now well, we'll work it out referee Chuck Everly bringing in out. his assistant yeah, we'll work it out. Can't make a call if you don't see it. Before the winner of this is lost. So, oh, it, it will be San Diego's possession. The Bears now are complaining bitterly. One of the officials apparently saw 
the fumble occurring before he was stopped. Let's take a look. The completion is Thomas, and let's see what happens. Okay, let's look at his knees. Let's see if he's down. That's the big key. Uh, well, it's still hard to tell. Hard the ball to tell. Come out. You can't tell if his knees was down. Well, San down. Diego, in any event, has the football at the 41-yard line. They have a 3 to nothing lead. 2.30 remaining in the first half. Not a well-played football game by the Bears offensively. The Chargers surprisingly strong defensively. Jackson. And now the crowd perhaps inspiring the Chargers somewhat as Jackson ripped off about nine yards. They caught him in a good defense that time. The Bears were blitzing. They had Otis Wilson, the, I mean Mike Singletary, coming in from the other side. So he did get that linebacker support. They came around the corner that time. It's a big series. Let's take a look at it. It's a big series for the Chargers because the Bears certainly aren't a come-from-behind football team that they can get up by 10 points. And you see Ernest Jackson doing one super job of staying with his blocks and stretching out the run and picking up nine yards. Looking for that first down marker. He didn't quite get there. It'll be second down less than a yard. Charlie Joyner, all-time leading receiver in the NFL for San Diego now, has not caught a pass yet. Jackson will get a first down, stays on his feet, and almost pops it loose. Gets to the 26. How many times have we seen Fensick do that? Coming up from that safety, he's been a real competitor, a good hard hitter for his long time. That's one of uh, Howard's favorites. He likes the Yale, he said. Here's well, your... When you play the type of defense that Chicago plays, sometimes you're going to get burned by a run. If you can break the tackle, you can go all the way. But you saw Gary Fensick came up at good position and stopped him, but it was a first down. Two-minute warning. And for San Diego, it'll be a first down of 10, 26-yard line. But we are going to join Jim Lampley right now. All right, Frank, and a look at the big marquee item on yesterday's menu, the Dolphin Raider battle. Every bit as spectacular as had been anticipated. Having won it, the Raiders are now 5-0 and since, or versus Miami since Tom Flores has been head coach. Marino raised the touchdown pass total for the season to 40, an NFL record. Clayton caught two touchdown passes, working mostly against Hayes. He had a spectacular day. That one put Miami up 27-24 in the third. A seesaw game, which the Raiders didn't put away until a minute 43 to go. This long touchdown run by Marcus Allen, who got away from all the Dolphins defenders and the police dog in the end zone. The Raiders will be on Monday night football next Monday night from Pontiac, Michigan at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And Frank, with all those great athletes on the field yesterday, the most impressive might have been Mike Haynes, the corner for the Raiders. Hey, we're really busy, too, covering the two Marks. <laughs> Mark Clayton and Mark Duper. And that other end, Marino, going over 400 yards throwing the football. Right. That's Incredible. A... At the 27-yard line now, the San Diego Chargers first down at 10. They lead 3 to nothing. The Chargers have two timeouts remaining. Chandler in motion. This will be Jackson, right side. Jackson breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage by Otis Wilson. And we'll pick up about four yards, stopping the clock, stepping out of bounds at 155. Jackson, they have to suspect that at 5'9", when he was overlooked in the draft going in the eighth round, well, everyone seemingly thought he was too short. Last year, only carried the ball 11 times to 39 yards, and all of a sudden now he's vying for the AFC rushing championship. And he's so that I like, he's only fumbled two times. That's been well over 250 carries or handles of the football. Second and five. Luther has time. Holohan is there, and he's to the 11-yard line. First down, San Diego. Mike oh. Singletary made the stop, but San Diego is really showing something tonight. A lot of heart, if nothing else. Injury decimated. This man perhaps the finest quarterback, or certainly right there with him. In a lot of years to come along on the bench. He can't go because of the full groin and the injured back. Well, he's me, Frank. At the 11-yard line. Second kicking off. Down close to a minute 15. Good tackle, good tackle Gary Fincy. Hey, that was good because they caught that linebacker. On the inside, that's that a nice little turn in block. I believe that was Otis Wilson that kind of hooked in there. He right. got on the outside. Mike Ditka. Don Coryell. I love Coryell's expressions on the sideline. Oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> he gets into it, doesn't he? Only, yeah. only coach in the history of football to have won over 100 games professionally. And is the collegiate coach. Former San Diego State and Whittier College coach with a great record. Second down and 10. 
Luther. And Luther had one receiver trying to get off the line. Holahan held up, but Seaver was there. Only a gain of about two yards. Timeout called by San Diego. When they come back, they'll be looking at a third down and seven. And we'll be back after this message. San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium, the San Diego Chargers, leading the Chicago Bears three to nothing. 31 seconds remaining in the first half. The Chargers have a third down and seven. The ball inside the 10 yard line of Chicago. Luther, the pressure's there. Luther under tremendous pressure. Hartenstein was in there. Richard Dent was in there. Apparently, Don Coriel liked the fact that well, he did. Luther was forced to throw it away. He'd much rather throw it away than throw it to one of the guys in the white shirts. Applauding a successful throwaway. <laughs> That's what you call support from the bench. Benershka, he's provided the only scoring thus far in the evening. He hit earlier from 48 yards out. This will be a chip shot. Twenty-seven yard line. Luther will place it down. Gissinger will provide the snap. Rough. Yes. Rough. With six to nothing, with 22 seconds remaining, here's Jim Lampsey once again. All right, thanks, Frank. More highlights coming up at halftime, but first a look at the Rams who stayed in contention for an NFC wildcard spot as Eric Dickerson had another big day in pursuit of O.J. Simpson's single-season rushing record. Dickerson, you're going to see his longest run of the day at 21 yards. As the graphic showed you, he now needs 223 yards to break O.J.'s single-season rushing record of 2003. And on the last Friday night of the season, you'll be seeing Dickerson against the San Francisco 49ers here on ABC in the game in which he most likely will be gunning for that record. Yes. And O.J., he has Houston next week, and then we'll watch him Friday, December the 14th. He needs 223. That'll be tough to get next week, but... I want to see you smile when you go down and take his hand before that game on Friday. I know you think so highly of him. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, come on, OJ. <laughs> oh, me. Tell you, if it's going to be broken and all records are meant to be broken, He's a good one. he is one of the finest I've ever seen come into this game. He has I, great speed and size, everything. And the education he received at SMU, SMU is the one thing that could actually propel him past that record. And actually, I'm going to get a chance to see him tomorrow morning, talk to him a little bit. He's as good as they get. That's without a doubt. Vanessa hits it. And finally, Jack Cameron had to field it. And Cameron waited, hoping it would trickle out of bounds. It did not. Cameron gets it to the 22-yard line, returning at 16 yards. And there are 16 seconds remaining in the first half. And San Diego, surprisingly, on top of the Bears in a game the Bears feel they desperately need. They can control their own destiny if they can win tonight, win next week at home against Green Bay, and the final Sunday against Detroit in Detroit. That would put them ahead of any of the possible three from the NFC Eastern Division, Dallas at 9-5, the Giants at 9-5, and Washington at 9-5. And the Bears must finish ahead of those three from the NFC Eastern Division if they're going to play that first playoff game at home. On first down. Lee. Good time to have the screen to Matt Suey. And Suey to the 39-yard line, upended there by John Turner. First down, Chicago. They'll use one of their timeouts. They have two remaining. 17-yard pickup. Leash, of course, in there because of the injury to Steve Fuller. Separated shoulder in the first quarter. And we will be in Detroit watching the Raiders who are right in that playoff picture, too. And as I mentioned earlier, perhaps playing the best football of the season, maybe the best in the NFL right now. In good it, shape. A new time now, 8 o'clock Eastern time. That means 5 o'clock in the West Coast. And, of course, an hour difference right across the country. And then there's the game we spoke of a moment ago, the Rams against... The San Francisco 49ers, San Francisco, of course, has clinched the NFC Western Division. They are 13-1, guaranteeing their home field advantage. And could be guys that San Francisco will have to go 30 miles to play in the Super Bowl that we'll be covering for you January 20th. Right there in Palo Alto. Beyond, they practice right around well, Redwood City, so they really wouldn't have to go 30 miles. I bet they appreciate us getting them in the Super Bowl already. already don't, you, yeah. don't you know they love that? You like to hear that? They're a long way away, but they got a good shot at it. I tell you, next week is going to be a tough game for the Raiders. Uh, Detroit normally plays them pretty 
pretty tough, and uh, I think they're two and two the last four times they played, and the Raiders have lost the last two times they've been back to Detroit. So it should be a good game. I'd like to think you're right. <laughs> first down and 10, 38 yard line. He is an optimist. That's the time remaining in the first half. With San Diego on top, six to nothing. Jim Lampley will provide highlights for you during the halftime. Nation back on first down. Puts one up. Hey, he's about a 65 long way. yards. He got and a bear come Oh, on. they did not hold on. Grant Anderson had it in his hand. And he could not hold on. And time has expired here in the first half. Not that it would have mattered because time had expired and there was no flag. So the Bears will go into the locker room. They'll hear some rumbling from Dipka. I'm sure of that. They have not played well here in the first half. We'll be back.